When I started using my first digital camera, I was so excited. It had all these features that I could use to get really great photos. But some of those features really intimidated me. One of those features was the histogram. And I'm here to tell you that it really isn't as difficult as you think, and it's really useful to use, especially if you're a beginner. Now, when I saw my first histogram on that LCD screen on the back of my camera, I thought, what on earth have graphs got to do with photography? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain what it is, how you can use it, and how it can make you a much, much better photographer. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how you can make some adjustments later on that can actually affect your histogram in editing as well. Now, for you more experienced photographers, I'm gonna make some broad sweeping statements in this video. There's gonna be a lot of generalization, and I'm gonna skip over a lot of details. I want this video to be accessible to beginners, so if I miss anything out, that's why. Let's talk about the basics of what a histogram is then. For a long time, camera manufacturers have been building features into their cameras to help us as photographers get correct exposures when we take a picture. We don't want our pictures being too dark or too bright, we want it just right. And this has advanced over the years. What actually inspired this video is me and my brother went to do some photography together at the Elam Valley. And I was gonna record this video there, but the weather was abysmal, so we just enjoy doing photography rather than trying to film anything because the conditions just didn't suit it. Uh, but he was using our granddad's old Canon AE-1, an old film camera, an absolute beauty of a machine, and actually the first film camera I've ever used in my life. I've only ever been a digital photographer. Uh, so that was quite the experience trying to learn how to use an analog camera. But even back then, manufacturers were building things into their cameras to make it easier for us as photographers to get the right exposure. In particular with that camera, it's got a light meter built into it. You select what shutter speed you want and then when you look through the viewfinder, you hold a little button down and a needle moves to tell you what aperture you should use to get a correct exposure according to that light meter. A histogram is essentially just a very advanced version of that. You've probably seen on your own digital camera uh, that there's a little light bar that moves up and down to tell you uh, exactly how overexposed or underexposed you are. A histogram though, gives you a lot more information about what your exposure is. So let's talk about how you can read a histogram now. A histogram really is quite a simple concept. It's basically a graph that shows you the measured tones within your picture. So you've got your shadows on this side and your highlights on this side. Everything in between is your mid tones. What you can do with this is see how correctly exposed your picture is. So let's talk about how you can read that. If your picture is overexposed, too bright, all the lines, the graph will be bunched up on this side. If it's too dark, it'll all be bunched up on this side. If you've got a contrasty scene, you'll probably get spikes either side because you've got really dark shadows and really bright highlights. Ideally, to get a correctly exposed picture, you want a nice even graph, something like a peak in the middle or two peaks that aren't touching the edges. Now, one of the most important ways to use a histogram is to make sure that you don't blow out your highlights, especially in the sky. If you've got quite an even graph all the way along, but you notice there's a sharp spike at the end, that means that the sky is well blown out. It means there's no detail to be picked up and you won't have a good exposure. Same with the shadows. If it's all spiked at the end of the shadows, that means that there's no detail in the shadows. It'll just be pure black. And no matter how much you raise the exposure afterwards, you won't have a good exposure. And it really is that simple in order to read your histogram. Now, in order to display it on your camera, usually all you need to do is press the info or display button on the back to get it on your LCD screen. And some modern cameras, like the camera I use for filming, you can even see it if you look through the viewfinder. It displays it on a screen in the back. My personal recommendation would be to have that displayed all the time, unless you just want a clean feed of what your composition is because if you just keep one eye on your histogram at all times, it'll make it so much easier to take a correctly exposed picture every time. In fact, if you always keep one eye on the histogram, you will never underexpose or overexpose a photo ever again. So now let me give you a few examples and demonstrations to show you exactly what I mean. So here we have an example of what you might call a correctly exposed image. This is the raw file of a picture I took while I was at Elan Valley. As you can see in the histogram up in the top corner up here, uh, we've got three peaks. We've got our shadows on this side, got our mid-tones that peak in the middle, and we've got our highlights here. Now the shadows, they represent these dark areas. You can see there's a lot of darkness in the bricks and in the trees. Uh, the mid-tones, uh, I'm gonna assume that represents this water here. Although it's white, it's not really bright. It's not reflecting a lot of light into the lens. Uh, so it's not being picked up as a very bright highlight. What is a very bright highlight though, is the sky up here. 
that's this third peak that we can see on the right hand side. That's what you might call a correctly exposed photo. As you can see, although it's peaking at both ends, it doesn't hit the edges. Once those peaks go to the edge and beyond, that's where your histogram is showing that there is no detail in those patches of the picture. All detail is lost, there's nothing to recover. So that means when we edit the photo, like I have done with this one, as you can see, it changes the histogram. That's because I've adjusted things, I've raised some of the shadows, lowered the highlights, kind of spread it out a little bit so there's a bit more of an even histogram. As you can see, there's still a really big spike in the highlights. That's because there is still a bright sky. That's completely natural. The sky is supposed to be bright. But what you can see I've done is I've stretched those shadows out. There's not as much of a peak in the shadows. It's still there, but it kind of slowly fades away. That's because I've raised those mid-tones a little bit and you can see a lot more detail in the picture. That's the really good thing about editing is that you can really adjust the picture to first of all bring out a lot more detail but also to make it a lot more pleasing to the eye. That's what it looked like to me while I was at the scene rather than what this raw file shows. So that's an example of a correctly exposed image that is just adjusted later on to look a bit more pleasing. This is a more extreme example. Now you will often see this on bright sunny days. As you can see, according to the histogram, I've blown both my highlights and I've lost detail in the shadows. That's because my camera didn't have enough dynamic range to capture both the light and the dark. So because I had it in aperture priority mode, the camera found a balance. It got just enough detail in the shadows that I could recover something and just enough detail in the sky so that I could recover something, which I was able to do in editing. Now, as you can see with this photo, I've raised the shadows a little bit. They're still ever so slightly blown out according to this. If you, little tip for if you're using Lightroom, if you press the little arrow there, it'll highlight where you've blown out either the highlights or clipped the shadows, which is a really useful feature. As you can see, there's a very bright spot that I've completely clipped. The reason for that is because that is the sun. Now, on almost any picture you take, unless you've got specialized equipment, you will probably blow out the sun if it's directly in the frame. People expect that, and in my opinion, it doesn't make for a particularly ugly photo. In fact, I really quite like this photo, despite the fact that I had lost some of those details, you could still make it work. And that's the thing to bear in mind when you're using your histogram, is that sometimes there are situations where it is impossible to get a perfectly balanced exposure. The trick in those situations is to make sure that you still have enough detail in the photo to work with so that you can still produce a really good image. As I said, keep your eye on the histogram, but don't let that stop you from taking an image that you think is still really nice because you can still work with really high dynamic scenes like this one. Now with this third example, I wanna show you a little trick that you can do with your file in order to maintain that detail for when you're printing specifically. And this is really handy because when you're printing on white paper, if you've got blown out highlights, then there won't be any detail there. There'll be nothing printed on that. It'll just be a white patch of paper, which will be really obvious if you hang it up on your wall. So with this picture, for example, as you can see, it's a pretty good exposure. We're almost clipping those highlights and we've clipped a couple of the shadows, uh, which I can live with if I press on it. You can just see it's just in the brick here. There's just a few patches. That's forgivable. Nobody's really gonna notice that in printing. But as you can see with my editing, nothing is clipped whatsoever. That's where the trick comes in. These highlights might look clipped, they're not, it was just a flat sky. So I've colored it slightly orange to give it a bit of color and to contrast with the blue of the water uh, using a bit of color theory. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that in another video. So if you wanna see a video about color theory, make sure you're subscribed because uh, I'm gonna do a little tutorial on that at some point. But the trick I've done here is, as you can see, I've colored those highlights but if I colored them and they were clipped, it would still show as white because clipped highlights will always show up as white when you're printing. So what I've done is, as you can see on my point curve here, uh, this is in a preset that I applied. Here you can see there's actually a histogram on your point curve. That's really handy because you can see when you're moving those points, which part of the tone curve you're affecting. That's how it works. So as you can see with the highlights, I've brought the highlight point down a couple of stops. That's what you can do with this. If I raise it right up again, as you can see, if you look at the histogram, we've blown out some of the highlights again. It shows me that's gone turned red. That means some of the highlights have blown out. 
If I were to print that, they would appear as completely white patches on my paper. It would be really ugly, especially with it being at the top. It would just seem like the picture ends at that tree line. Whereas by bringing that, those highlights down a couple of stops there, when I come to print that now, that patch of the paper will be printed with a slightly orange hint showing up as the sky. It's the same with the shadows. Now, this is more to apply a filmic effect. If I left this down at the bottom, this bottom corner of the picture here would just be printed as black on the paper. That's fine. Uh, in my opinion, that's acceptable uh, for a lot of photos, as long as not too much of the photo being printed as black. But you'll notice I've done exactly the same. I've raised it up just a couple of stops, which makes those blacks ever so slightly gray and brings back a little bit of the detail that's in this very shadowy area here. Now I want that to be shadowy and blurred out because I want it again to look like it's taken through the eye of a human. That's my style. Uh, I like to have shallow depth of field because I like it to be as if it's from someone's perspective. It would be possible to get this completely sharp, but in my opinion, that wouldn't be my sort of style of photo. Now, because I want that to have a sort of a filmic look, I've raised those blacks on the point curve a little bit to give it a slightly grayed out look as if it was taken on film. And I did actually take this picture with the film camera that me and my brother were using, our granddad's camera, but we haven't had that developed yet. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. I'll share that in a couple of videos time. My first ever image taken on film. If you want to see that and perhaps judge me for it, <laughs> then make sure you subscribe so you get to see that. So using your histogram really is that simple. Remember those few basic points. You want to make sure that you're not clipping your shadows nor your highlights. You want a sort of a balanced picture. Sometimes it's okay if it's a very high dynamic scene, you can recover a little bit. And there are a few tricks that you can use to make sure that your histogram isn't blown out when you're editing. But of course, in situations where it's impossible to get those highlights and those shadows, it can be really confusing as to what exactly you should do. Well, this video here will show you a trick that you can do in camera so that you don't lose any detail whatsoever. I'll see you next time. What do you think about that? Highlights. Shadows, highlights. Shadows, highlights.